In the United States, religion and views on the subject change from region to region. We pray on Sundays, ask God for guidance in moments of hopelessness, but along the Bible Belt, things are different. It's known as a hotbed of religious and conservative values. Tent revivals, evangelist leaders, and church attendance is much higher. Texas, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Missouri, Kansas, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Kentucky, as well as the southern areas of Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana, and the central areas of West Virginia and Virginia are some of the states in the belt. Along the belt, a story of cheating, sex, and murder was slowly building deep in Oklahoma. The lives of three people would soon change forever. Today's show is that tale, Sex, Murder, and the Bible, the Brenda Andrew and James Pavat story. Born in 1963, Brenda Evers grew up in a devoutly religious family in Enid, Oklahoma. She was a straight-A student, conservative, and always wore respectable clothing. Usually buttoned all the way up, it was in her senior year of high school, Brenda met Rob Andrew. He was a year older than her and studying advertising at Oklahoma State University. Both had come from close, highly religious families. And although their faiths were different, the two complemented each other perfectly. After a year, Brenda transferred to Oklahoma State to be closer to Rob. And in 1984, the couple wed. Before Brenda finished college, Rob pursued a career in advertising and Brenda began working in banking. The couple moved to Texas when Rob suddenly made the decision to return home to Oklahoma, something Brenda wasn't happy about. Not long after the return, the couple sought marriage counseling from a local pastor. Once the couple settled back into life in Oklahoma, Brenda stopped working at the bank and became a stay-at-home mother when the birth of their first child, a daughter, happened in 1990 and four years later when their son was born in 1994. Once the family expanded with Rob's six-figure salary, they bought a home, one of the most upscale neighborhoods, and from the outside looking in, they seemed like the perfect family. But they weren't. Even though Brenda enjoyed her life as a mother, she didn't want to conform to the most imaginable image of mothers around her she seemed to she seemed to display she was older now but still had that trim fit girlish figure and she was proud of that and didn't mind showing it off wearing tight skirts and tight clothing low cut tops and very short dresses which she even wore when she taught Sunday school at the local Baptist church. It wasn't until Brenda turned 40, she seemed to be a totally different person, wearing more revealing clothing and beginning an affair with her best friend's husband. Many have said they believe Brenda and her actions to be midlife crisis. Some said that she wanted to make a change, and others said Brenda told them that she only had stayed with Rob because of the money. After a year of cheating with her best friend's husband, he left her for another woman, and soon after Brenda began another affair, only this time she was bolder. Some recollections of it say she walked up to a young man in a grocery store wearing a low-cut top and a short skirt, smiled and slid a hotel room key to him, 
smiled and walked away. A few hours later, Brenda and her grocery store lover were in a hotel not far up the road, tangled in the sheets, and each other. But like her last affair, it didn't last. It was after this she met fellow Sunday school teacher James Pavat. He was recently divorced, an insurance salesman, and he worked at a Sunday school alongside Brenda, Brenda's husband, Rob, Rob knew James. The two had went on hunting trips together, and James had recently sold Rob an $800,000 life insurance policy with Brenda as, as the sole beneficiary. James and Brenda soon began an affair, one that was so public the entire church and her and Rob's children knew. Brenda and James had taken the kids on vacation to Mexico, and shortly after, Rob demanded Brenda end her affair with James. In October 2001, Against Rob's desires, Brenda filed for divorce and the couple separated for the second time. Later that month, Rob found his brake line had been cut and while having his car service received a call. Brenda was in the hospital and he needed to come right away. He hung up and called the hospital only to find she wasn't there. Rob had changed the beneficiary of his insurance policy to his brother, and two days before Thanksgiving, Brenda called him home to help her relight the pilot light in the garage. <laughs>